how to perform a lower extremity arterial duplex exam. Hey, I'm Drew, aka the skilled sonographer, and today we're going to get into a simple, easy to understand tutorial. I'm going to take you step by step through an exam protocol, the whole thing. But first, let's make sure we're on the same page about the exam that we're discussing. So the indications for the, this type of exam should be claudication. This patient is trying to walk a certain distance and their legs give out. Their legs feel tired. They have to stop and then start walking again. They have rest pain. Lying in bed, their legs are aching, giving them pain. They have cold feet. They have gangrene. These are the types of things that will be indicated for this type of exam. Now, some facilities do not perform this exam at all. Some only perform this exam after an abnormal ABI exam. Now, I have done a lower extremity ABI and PVR tutorial that you can find on my channel. These are the types of patients that will be coming for this type of exam. So the main thing you need to know is why you're doing the exam. You're trying to make sure that there is nothing impeding the blood flow going down towards the feet. There's no atherosclerotic plaque that's built up in the arteries preventing that blood flow from going to where it needs to go. The only two things you really need to do for this exam is really simple. This exam is really simple. You need to make sure you're on the correct anatomy and you're on the segment of the artery that you say you are on. And I'll explain a little bit about how to make sure you're doing that throughout this video. And the next thing you need to do is do not miss any hemodynamically significant stenoses. So every segment of the artery, you need to be following with color Doppler. Move the transducer, follow the artery distally with color Doppler on and look for any signs of aliasing, any areas of atherosclerotic plaque, anything abnormal that's attached to the vessel, anything of that nature. So as long as you're on the correct anatomy and you're not missing any stenosis, you're obtaining the proper images of a stenosis when you get to it, then you won't have any problem performing this exam. So calm, be calm. It's going to be okay. It's not that difficult of an exam. There can be difficult patients. There can be difficult patients, but the exam itself is not difficult to perform. Let's get started. First thing you want to do is ensure that the patient is in the proper position. For lower extremity arterial exams, it would be best for the patient to be in a frog leg position with the knee externally rotated, as you see here. Once you're far away to make, sure, make your exam harder than it needs to be is to not have the patient in the proper position. So definitely do not skip that. Let's get started with our first image, the common femoral artery. So one thing you need to remember is that the common femoral artery is always lateral to the vein. Do not image the common femoral vein as the artery. You need to make sure you find the artery that is pulsatile, where the, the walls are more defined, and check the arterial pulse wave signal to make sure that you're on the correct vessel. So this diagram here, this arrow corresponds, like in all my videos, to the transducer. The direction of the arrow corresponds to the direction of the notch. So here we have the transducer high in the groin. Do not be afraid to go way up high in the groin where you need to. Get the patient's underwear out of the way, whatever you need to do. This is not the time to be shy or modest. You need to get the transducer where it needs to be. So here we're simply going to take a 2D image of the common femoral artery and longitudinal. Now each facility's protocols are different. Do whatever your protocol says. Next, have the transducer in the same position. We're going to take a color image of the common femoral artery. Some places you can combine these and simply do the color with the pulse wave, which is what we're going to do next. You want to make sure that the sample gate is in the center of the vessel. So not only in the center between the walls, the anterior and posterior walls, 
but also from lateral to medial, it should be in the center of the vessel. How do you know you're in the center of the vessel? You'll see this clear spect spectral window. So there won't be a ton of echoes in the center unless there's some disease there. But this is a normal exam. So we know that we're in the center of the vessel because there are no additional echoes underneath the waveform. So next, the common femoral artery bifurcates into the deep femoral or profunda femoris artery and the superficial femoral artery. The deep is going to be more posterior to the superficial femoral artery. They run pretty much parallel as you can see in this diagram. So you'll take your longitudinal 2D image and then color in that same spot. I do like to have both the superficial femoral and the deep femoral artery in my image if possible. I just like the image, it just makes it more clear to the reading physician that you're on the correct artery. And then you'll take your pulse wave image. So the profunda femoris can be a little tricky to obtain to make sure you're only on the vessel because you also have the vein in that area and you can easily image that in 2D or on pul with pulse wave Doppler. But you want to make sure you're on the correct vessel whether you have to keep on reobtaining that image or not. Just make sure you have the correct anatomy in your image. There's nothing worse than imaging the wrong thing and saying it's something that it's not. Next, you're going to go to the proximal superficial femoral artery, take the longitudinal 2D image, and you're still way up high in the proximal thigh here. And again, color and pulse wave Doppler. You're going to measure the peak systolic, the highest point during systole, and then the lowest point during diastole. Now you're going to move the transducer to the mid thigh. This is where you should be able to obtain the superficial femoral mid portion of the artery. Then you're going to get your color image and then pulse wave. You're rinsing and repeating. It's really a simple exam. Next, you will slide more distally to the superficial, distal superficial femoral artery. Now this image takes a little bit more angling because the artery is starting to go by be travel behind the bone and through the adductor canal. So you might not be able to follow that vessel as distally as you would like, but get your image as distal as you can while you are able to visualize the image, the artery on the screen. Next, you really need to make sure that the patient is in the proper position. They might have to bend their knee slightly more than it was before so that you can get behind the knee. This is where your transducer will be, behind the knee, so you can access the popliteal fossa. So you're going to get to the popliteal artery. I take my popliteal artery images proximal to the anterior tibial artery, which we will discuss a little bit later on. So before that artery bifurcates, that is where you want to primarily have the majority of your image. Focus on that part. Longitudinal. So here is the anterior tibial artery. This branches off the popliteal artery and then it courses more anteriorly and laterally, as you can see here. And again, you're gonna obtain your pulse wave image proximal to that area. Next, pay attention because this is where a lot of atherosclerotic plaque exists in many people's arteries. The tibioperineal trunk. A lot of people aren't as familiar with this. This segment of the artery is between the bifurcation of the anterior tibial artery and the bifurcation of the perineal and posterior tibial arteries. So here the anterior tibial or takes off but also here you have the posterior tibial and the perineal arteries this is superior to that but this is a separate segment where a lot of people will have what we call tibioperineal trunk disease this will prevent the blood flow coming from down the thigh 
into all of the calf veins. Sometimes the patient will only have flow in the anterior tibial artery because that is proximal, that bifurcates proximal to where all the disease will be. So that flow is not hindered by that atherosclerotic plaque that is located more distally. So this is where you definitely want to take your time and image, see if there's any stenosis, any evidence of stenosis. You can check with color Doppler to see if there's any aliasing going on and also with pulse wave. If you start seeing more raggedy waveforms or turbulence in your waveforms, then you know you're in the area of some disease. Whenever you do come across some stenosis, you want to take some images. At least this is what my facility does. We take images proximal to the stenosis, at the stenosis, and distal to the stenosis. That way you can grade the stenosis by comparing the velocities proximal to and at the stenosis by using a ratio. How much, how many times higher the blood flow is at the stenosis versus proximal to the stenosis. So accurate velocity measurements is absolutely necessary. If there is a narrowing, you want to obtain the highest velocity narrowing possible. Now with the, this is where it can be a little bit more challenging. If you are struggling to obtain or the calf arteries, what you can do is turn in transverse, look for the veins. Those can sometimes be easier to identify in certain people, especially if the vessels, the arteries are heavily calcified. So you can look for the veins. You can turn on color flow, augment distally, and see the two areas of the veins light up at the posterior tibia or um, veins. So that way you know in between those two veins should be the posterior tibial artery. And a lot of times it will be smaller than those two veins. Now the posterior tibial artery should be just medial to the tibia. So when you're in transverse, you should see the tibia over here and over here will be the posterior tibial veins or vessels rather. So once you find it in transverse, stay on it and slowly turn to stretch it out. You might need to have color Doppler on while you turn on that vessel to make sure you stay on that vessel. It does take some practice. It does take some finesse to be able to get those calf vessels. So here you see with the color Doppler and then pulse wave Doppler. Next we're going to rinse, repeat, rinse and repeat. Move a little distally to the posterior artery, the mid posterior tibial artery, and then more distally for the distal posterior tibial artery. Next up, we're going to do the perineal arteries. Now the perineal artery should be anterior to the fibula. So again, when you are in transverse, you're going to check for a bone down here. This will be an echogenic structure with posterior shadowing. Right anterior to that will be the, the perineal vessels. Again, you can compress to see, are those veins blinking at you? Then you know you're in the right area for the perineal artery. Then you can slowly turn on that area, take all of your required imaging, and do the same for the mid. Could I find my perineal artery, the distal portion? No, I could not, no matter what I tried. I feel like I might have some type of congenital abnormality where my artery is not where it's supposed to be right here. I don't know. So whenever you can't find something, try your best looking color Doppler. Try to do pulse wave, kind of blind pulse wave to see if you can pick up any signals. Increase your pulse wave gain, decrease your scale, do all the things. But if you can't do it, you can't find it, simply label the area, what vessel you are supposed to be obtaining, and say area. Label it as area, or whatever your facility usually does. Moving on to the anterior tibial artery. So a lot of times I will have the patient, instead of the frog leg position, have their leg completely straight with their knee, kneecap being anterior post, their kneecap facing the ceiling. So 
And I also might ask them to turn their leg inwards so their knee is turned inwards and then I'll start on the outside of the leg. The anterior tibial artery can be tricky to observe. So it does take some practice. You want to look on the outside of the bone. So lateral to the tibial bone, you can look transverse. Sometimes you can move distally. Sometimes you can see the distal anterior tibial artery much easier than proximal. So you can move near the ankle, the outside of the ankle, and move up. Follow the, the vessel up and then turn on it. Whatever you need to do. So you will take the anterior tibial artery proximal images, then the mid, just move slightly distally to the mid, and then above the ankle to the distal anterior tibial artery. Okay, so that is the protocol. One thing you want to make sure that you are doing throughout your exam is make sure that the angle correct is parallel to the walls of the vessel. This should not be making a, an X with the walls of the vessel. It should be running parallel in the middle of the vessel. These two lines here, this is the angle correct. And you want to keep the angle at a 60 degree angle as much as possible. You can do 45, but usually with the lower extremity ar arteries, you don't need to. Just keep it at 60. You should be able to steer this beam as well steer the color box to be able to maintain that angle if necessary so if you are confused about the angle correct sample gate any of these words that i'm using you need to check out my website for the circulatory skill set this breaks down color doppler hemodynamics pulse wave doppler beam steering all of those terms all of those things in simple language i don't try to confuse you with a bunch of fancy words we make it as simple as possible because what's the point of using a learning tool if you can't understand the learning tool right so i highly recommend that and make sure that you understand all of those terms before you do any type of exam on any real patient you need to understand those things we need to be knowledgeable about the things that we are the exams that we are performing. Okay. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I tried to keep it as simple as possible. If you have any questions, definitely let me know down in the comments. And I'm still going to gra gradually work on getting more tutorials filmed for you all. I hope you all enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next video.